Hey everybody, welcome back to Ripple Training's YouTube channel. Travis here. Pretty excited about today's video. We're gonna talk about all things black magic and more specifically the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. You'll recall with the ATEM Mini Pro that you could record your live production or stream to a hard drive that's connected to your ATEM Mini. With the ISO, not only will you record that entire live production, it will also record isolated files of each input on your ATEM Mini. What's even greater is that it will also save a DaVinci Resolve project containing all of your cuts from your live stream or production. And furthermore, if you're working with Blackmagic pocket cinema cameras, it will also record the raw 4K files in the camera because the ATEM Mini is limited to HD. But if you record those 4K raw files in the camera, when you open up that DaVinci Resolve project, you will be able to switch from the HD footage over to those 4K raw footage from your pocket cinema cameras. This is pretty amazing because before you even get back to your post house, you have a rough cut of your shoot. This is great for anybody that works with multicam shoots. Let it be a music video, a live production, or an interview. I just think it's amazing. And so today we have a couple of Blackmagic cameras. I have one on my right here, another one on my left, and then we have our trusty C100 in front of us, which we'll be able to show you when you make that switch over to the raw 4K footage, what does that look like when you have HD included? And all of these cameras are being run into the A10 Mini ISO, and then Steve's running the switcher, and his confidence monitor is an eight, uh, Atomos Ninja that is capturing the HDMI uncompressed output from the A10 Mini ISO. So we're pretty excited about this setup. We're going to invite our friend Curtis up here to play some music for us, do a little switching, and then show you what that all looks like in DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started. So we finished our shoot with Curtis and I have all of our footage back here at the computer and we're ready to jump into DaVinci Resolve. The first thing is I have this Talisman folder. That's the name of Curtis's song. And this folder reflects the name that I entered in the ATEM software control app. If I open it up, we have several items to look at. At the top, I have audio source files. These are audio files from every single one of my inputs on the ATEM. Now I'll tell you that even if there is no signal going to an input, the ATEM will still generate a recorded file for that input. I had no signal going to my mic one and my mic two, but I get an empty recorded file anyway. Now next we have the Talisman DRP, that's your DaVinci Resolve project file. I'll come back to that in a moment. Next is the Talisman MP4. If I preview this file, this is a recording of the entire shoot with all of our cuts baked in. So I'll exit that preview. And next we have video ISO files. These are all the isolated MP4 recordings of each video input. So if I select the top one here and preview it and scrub through, there are no cuts. This is the isolated recording of that input. And that's the same for all my other inputs. Now, we mentioned at the beginning of this video that you can work with the raw footage from your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. And this is the folder that you're going to want to place those raw files in, the Video ISO Files folder. So here I have my B raw from camera one and camera two. Now these aren't the folders that I got from the cameras. I created these just for the tutorial, but these are the original names for the files. Notice it takes on the name of the shoot and then camera three, take one. This camera three, this camera was going to input three and this Blackmagic camera was going to input one. So I need to copy both of these or move these into my video ISO files folder. And now we're ready to open up our project. So just double click on your DRP file. When you open the project, you'll more than likely be brought to the cut page. And right away we can see with this mini timeline, 
we have all of these cuts in our project. I'll go ahead and jump to the edit page and you can see here all of our cuts from our switcher have been saved in our DRP file. I'm just now opening this project and I already have a rough cut. I have done no editing yet. This is amazing. So I'm going to jump back to the cut page and one of the main things I want to show you is how to replace a shot. And what's so great about the cut page is the DaVinci Resolve project creates what's called a sync bin for you. So up here I'm going to choose sync bin and you'll see all of our separate inputs are synced together and not only with each other but with our timeline. So as I scrub through my timeline, notice that sync bin is scrubbing too and we see all of our angles in this multi view to the right. Next I'll point out is we can tell which angle is being used by this orange highlight. This angle here, you can see the thumbnail matches the thumbnail in my timeline. And then also on the left in the sync bin, this orange camera is also indicating which angle is currently being viewed in the timeline. If I want to see the timeline, I'll just click this button here to switch back to the timeline view. And we can see that's the angle that we were looking at. So I'm going to go back to the sync bin and I'm going to find a shot I would like to replace. Here, this is an iPhone shot. Steve and I can't resist any chance to use another piece of hardware in a shoot. We have to complicate things for us ourselves. We are gear nerds. I'm going to replace this shot with one of our black magic angles. And I can see over here that angle three is coming up next. So I probably want to switch this out with our angle one. So to do that, this is how I switch out one of my shots. I'll use the up arrow to jump to the beginning of this edit, press I, down arrow to jump to the end, O to set my out point, get my playhead sitting over that, and then I'll simply click on angle one, and because I set a range in my timeline, the cut page knows that I want to match this shot to that range. And I also want to make sure I'm doing a video only edit. My audio down here, this is my main audio. I'm happy with it. I don't want any changes made to that. So I'm going to choose video only edit by clicking this button on the far left here. And next, I just need to click place on top. And just like that, we've added a different angle to our timeline. If I click back to timeline and back this up, we'll see that it's still perfectly in sync and we've chosen a new angle for our edit. So cool. The next thing I want to show you is how easy it is to adjust the timing of a cut. So if I play this back, Steve, who was operating the iPhone camera, had this really fun angle. It's kind of like a performance behind the scenes angle where we can see one of the other cameras recording Curtis. And I really like it, but you can see I made my switch just a little bit late when Steve was repositioning for another shot. So to fix that, I'll back my playhead up to where we're still sitting on that angle. And with my mouse right over the edit, I can perform a roll edit. I'll just move that over. And because I like this shot, I'm going to go ahead and move over this edit point as well so it's still on a little bit longer. And let's back that up and see what it looks like. Perfect. So it's so easy to come in here after a shoot and make small tweaks to your cuts. Now I do want to mention that these are all just straight cuts. On the ATEM we were just using the cut button. Now if we chose to do transitions like slides or wipes, those would be translated over into the DaVinci Resolve project, but in DaVinci Resolve they would be turned into dissolve transitions. Right now the dissolves are the only things that are supported. So you'll see where all your transitions are. They'll be there, but they'll be turned into dissolves. Blackmagic does say that more features will be supported in the DaVinci Resolve project in a future date. On to Blackmagic RAW or B-RAW. So we added our B-RAW clips to our ISO files folder earlier. And if I come over into the media pool, you can see we have a Blackmagic RAW 
bin, and if I open these up, you can see there's our raw files, but we're still working with the MP4 files. To switch over to raw, we simply need to click this little camera film strip button in the top right of the viewer. And right away, we see that our shot was switched over to this low contrast shot. And I can see it in the viewer, and I can see it in my timeline. And if I scroll around, you can see our other angle has been switched to raw as well. So let's normalize this footage real quick. I'm gonna jump over to the color page. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to remote grades by right clicking on one of these clips and choose use remote grades. So now I'll only have to grade one clip, but all that'll affect all the clips from the same source file or angle. So you can see with this clip selected has this little pink arrow so sort of this, this one over here, they're the same shot, and I only have to grade one of them and it'll affect all instances. Now, we'll move down to our camera raw panel. You get to the camera raw panel by clicking this button here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my decode using from project to clip. And I mentioned earlier that we're working with a C100 camera, so to help myself match these cameras, under color space, I'm gonna choose Canon Cinema Gamut. And that's gonna help us get closer to matching these cameras. And next, under Gamma, I'm gonna choose Blackmagic Design Extended Video. It's originally set to Film. That's what's giving us that low contrast look. So if I choose Extended Video, right away our footage gets normalized and it looks much closer to our C100 angle. And I've done no grading yet. And I need to do this same process with my other raw clip. I'll change my decode using to clip. And I'll change color space to uh, Canon Cinema Gamut and then extended video for my gamma. And now we can see that all these angles are matching really well. Now there are other ways to normalize your raw footage. I'm aware of that. I am just showing you one way right now. So now we've normalized our footage and we've switched to those raw files, I need to show you a gotcha when it comes to editing after you make that raw switch. So we're back in the cut page, and again, we've switched to raw, and I've decided, you know what, this is a cool shot, but I would prefer if we had another one of those pocket cinema angles here. So like before, I'm gonna set my range around this clip with I and O, and I'm gonna navigate back to my sync bin, and before this shot, it looks like angle one is being used. So let's switch to angle three here. So I'll choose three, and then I'll choose that place on top edit. And what I want you to notice, if I back up here, we can tell this is a raw clip because of the low contrast thumbnails. But notice this clip on top, it's very high contrast. That's because our sync bin contains MP4 files. Even though we've switched and are using raw footage, I've edited in an MP4 file into here. And you may not know that if I go to the timeline view and you're skimming through, well, they all look the same, so everything's good to go. But that's not true. I know this is an MP4 file. So what you need to do if you edit in a clip from the sync bin after you've made the switch is simply turn off the raw footage and turn it back on and now this will be converted over to your raw file. And notice that it's still low contrast because we haven't done any grading. This wasn't linked when we did the remote grade, so you'll need to go and apply your adjustments to this clip after the fact. So I'm gonna delete that. And the last thing I wanna talk about is these raw files are UHD. Right now, this is a 1080 timeline because everything that comes out of the ATEM is limited to 1080, but our raw files are UHD. So to switch to a UHD timeline, click this menu, and you can see where it's currently set to 1080. I'll choose Ultra HD. And now our timeline is set to UHD. But one thing to remember is my iPhone and my C100 angle are not UHD. These are still HD shots. So they are being scaled up, and I can tell you they look okay right now, but if I were to export this, you will notice a significant loss of quality in these two angles. So if you have a mix of cameras and not everything is UHD, I recommend you just stay 
with the full HD 1080. By the way, if you prefer the edit page, you could take all of this source media and turn it into a multicam clip. All of this source media has the same time code that it has gotten from the ATIM software control app. You won't have all of your edits saved from the shoot, but you could create a multicam clip and then work in the edit page and re-edit all of your footage. If you'd like to learn more about the different ATIM Mini models, please check out my ATIM Mini Essential Training at rippletraining.com. You'll find a link in the description. All right, so that is pretty amazing workflow. I really love how all of this black magic stuff just works together. I love the ecosystem they're creating. So let us know what you guys think. Do you like it? Are you interested in using the A10 Mini Pro ISO? Leave a comment below, click the bell, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.